west will go on and and, and master sent in this one master says that is it sure that you can solve every need of the people or be there for them those who will vote for you no you can't no everybody and, and, and that's you being yeah candid. that's me being like i can't I, and when i meet the people when i meet the youth and they say they want jobs i tell you that look i can't give everybody jobs but i can give some of you jobs so significant that, significant so that as time goes on you know i would sort out the rest of them and so i tell you the truth i can't solve everybody's needs but at least when you see that there's progress being made you know that oh at least mm -hmm. uh interesting yeah. we'll, we'll get into your personal life and lots of messages are coming in people people are in love with john dumello as well so we'll, we'll get to the messages but you're an actor yeah. and, and you're a farmer yeah how the 24 hour economic policy impact on these two sectors practically i mean for you as an actor <clears throat> and as a farmer before we delve into the whole society i am i am i am in agribusiness you know i i i farm i add value to whatever it is i produce and so um we have production units we have places where people pack the stuff you have places where people process the ginger into powder into paste and so on and so forth and we work from eight to five, sometimes eight to six, because that's the end of the day. But we need to continue production. And what the NDC is simply saying with the 24 hour economy is, look, let's run a shift system. Businesses must, mustn't end because the day is over. That's it. And so for me as, as, as a businessman, what I need to do is in the evenings, I know that another shift is gonna come. And you're fully ready for yeah, this. Yeah, I'm fully ready for this because what am I getting? Tax incentives reduce the tariffs in terms of uh, electricity security and so on and so forth who wouldn't enjoy this but like you and i we travel around the world we go to cities that never sleep mm. sometimes when you go us and things your parties charlie i go job and it's 10 in the night and the person is going to work why can't we do the same thing in ghana so that we keep the economy running 24 hours so you're going to get your farmers work 24 7. In shift. they'll run shifts yes shift. that's it 24 hours because look when 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 you harvest the ginger you peel it you wash it you peel it you wait for some time you blend it you package it when it's five oh yeah that's it no mm -hmm. but but if, if we're running shift we don't have to wait till the next day people will come from six to ten or six to eleven the another group will come maybe the packaging group will come from eleven or twelve to four uh, a.m and then the next shift comes and so we need to keep on running because when you have huge orders you mm. can't say oh we can't meet up we can't meet it in two weeks because, because our people work from eight to five you can say you can meet it meet it you know you can meet up with it in four or five days because you're running a 24-hour economy and and that is what that is simply what the ndc is saying so that, you wholly believe in that policy and you know that it's yeah, doable and feasible it's doable my look my father used to work in El eloquid is a, a gas company they you know they produce right. uh, oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and so on and so forth and those days when i in the 80s when i used to go to the factory they close at five they close at six why because they, they've shut down the plant now if you take a typical factory like that and it was running 24 hours you should know that oxygen is going to be in constant supply all the um, essential gases are going to be in constant supply the drivers are moving everything is working and so you don't have to wait till please wait eight in the morning when we open shop before you can come and buy your stuff and so it is doable it is possible and it is something that is going to create millions of jobs across the country and you are holy for it so yes. we mentioned that's for your farming you know or a great you know yeah. side yes what about acting yeah look well i've been acting for so many years um when is when is uh eight or nine in the evening everybody says oh chale ya bread everybody says oh you know what we are tired yeah. but guess what after we finish we are human beings we cannot we cannot work 24 we can, i cannot work 24 hours and so we have to run shift but after we finish shooting our scenes and so on and so forth the technical people take over the editors they can run 24 hours they can they can now take over the shift and say that you know what we are going to work from eight whatever it is we filmed we are going to use it we're going to edit it from eight to twelve or eight to two or eight to the next morning and then so another badge will take over so you believe that the policy direction is needed and, and clearly will we'll actually set this emotion 
Exactly. Who wouldn't want reduced tariffs? Who wouldn't want tax incentives because they are working 24 hours? Everybody would want that. Businessmen, everybody would want that. I met a business guy who says, you know what, John, we package, and the package we use, we use a lot of electricity because we use heat to seal the things. And so for me, what he said was, John, for me, I'm going to use evening time to be able to package my stuff because that is when the electricity tariffs, tariffs have been reduced. And that's simply what we are saying. It, this is not a one D one F thing that is a hoax or is a hoax or is something that uh, one district one whatever whatever those guys say. I mean, this is something that is going to work, mm. and it is not. It doesn't involve so much. It just involves the private sector coming on board to say, "Hey, I love your twenty four hour economy uh, policy, and I'm hooked onto it, and let's make Ghana work again." You, you have. A lot of universities, you mentioned about six or seven within yeah. your, you know, constituency. How do you seek to raise digital awareness as, as an MP? Look, um, AI is the way to go now, pretty much. And, and uh, these days, you can't do anything without data. You can't do anything without computers. You can't do anything without... Uh, nothing is manual. Everything is digital. And so you have students who are now, you know, asking for laptops, asking for data and so on and so forth, to be able to enhance the work that they do. Everything yeah. is on it. And so the first thing, you know, I, I, I wish, wish I could, could do, which I started in 2020, was giving out free laptops to the students. So the government is doing that now. Will you hail such, you know, where, where a, a policy? They're giving out laptops. Mm -hmm. Four, 450,000 laptops have, have been, you know, deployed to be given or distributed to schools, to tertiary institutions, to those in, in, in SHS. The, 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 Will you salute such a move? No. Why? By you did that? By, personally, I did it. Okay. Yes. So as an MP, you, you continue that if you are to win? It's progressive. Government is doing it. Will you, will you commend them for it? No. Why? Because it's progressive. You can't share laptops to, university, to, to secondary school students when they don't have anywhere to sleep, when they don't have food to eat. When you were giving it to them, they still had those are universities. Issues. Those are university students. Right. And this is personally from my pocket. I'm not government. Correct. I was doing it as an individual. But they still don't have a place to sleep like you're saying. So if government is government is also giving it to university I mean, students. No, not Legon. Legon, mm -hmm. what Legon is doing is one 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 student, one laptop policy, personally, by okay. the university. By university. Not, uh, 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 what do you call it? Yeah, not, but not Legon also recognizes that there are these issues, but they're still giving one laptop per student. Yes, but I get your point. Yes. They're also trying to solve the accommodation issue. Because it's pro that's what I'm saying. You have to do everything progressive. Like, recently... So you will not salute government for... for no. How can you go and give uh, iPads and stuff to, to, to what? Basic school students when they are learning when they are senior, yeah, when, senior when, schools, when, yeah. When, when they are when they are learning on the phone, when they don't have anywhere to sleep, when they don't have food to eat, when you know when you watch the documentary on 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 the other stations. I mean, so then, how do you bridge that digital gap? Because everybody's looking at Industry 4.0. Even now, it's you know 5.0. So how then do you bridge the gap? Government feels that let's let's project or get into the future now by going digital. When you don't have light, when there's doom so, when you've not fixed it. When the student, I mean, look, you can give somebody a laptop, mm. but if the person is hungry, forget the laptop. That's why the NDC said the free SHS has to be progressive. Progressive. Build the, the, the facilities. Let the students feel safe. Let them have somewhere to lay their head. Let them have good food to eat. Then you can progressively attach this, uh, you know, laptop. But if you don't do that, you don't expect somebody in, you know, uh, you know, uh, a region somewhere who there's no light, there's no food to eat, nothing, nowhere to sleep, bed bugs, and so on and so forth. And and the parents are complaining. The students go yeah, from the house. They go, you know, nice, fat, you know, cool, and then they come back lean. And they say are giving their laptops to do what? What are the textbooks that they, they were supposed to be given to the SHS students? Are there any textbooks? No, but you say are giving laptops. Where is it? So, 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 so you believe that government should take a second look at it? Completely. Is the 2024 election done and dusted for the NDC? From, from what you hear from people, like you said, you go around, people are telling, oh, John, yes, you're coming in. Is that the same for the party? You know, when I go somewhere, people say, oh, yeah. John, oh, you're oh, you're I say, hey, cool down. Oh, so it's not done and dusted? No. There's work to be done? No, because until the last ballot paper is counted, mm. it is not done and dusted. It is not. It is not done and dusted. Uh, a lot of work? A lot of work. You can't... Be, people cannot say, okay, yes, people are fed up with MPP, so NDC, it's it's a done deal for... It is not a done deal It's till, not a given. Till the last ballot paper is counted across the country and President Mahama has been declared the winner and most of our MPs, including myself, are in Parliament. So it is not... A, we have to be vigilant 
because these guys are going to steal. Are you afraid of that? Or, or do you sleep and think that the MPP will, will rig the election? Does it cross your mind? We are ready for them. No, when you say it's two different things, I'm saying that does it cross your mind that yes. it's going to be free? Of, it does. Yeah. You are afraid or the you think that you have the thought that the MPP can rig the elections? Elections are free, but can never be fair when it comes to the MPP. And so we are ready for... Elections, I, that, that is a very serious thing. Yeah. But of course, they've been in power for these two terms. They've yeah. been in power during President Kufo. Yeah. Are you saying that during those times it wasn't free and fair? No. Interesting. Go to the Asante region. Go to the Asante region and listen to what they say. I mean, come on. You have people just tam printing the ballot papers and put it. Elections but, are free. but President Bahama conceded. So it means that, yes, it carried on. Because, he's, was, a, because he's a peaceful man. President Bahama is a peaceful man. Are you saying the MPP didn't win the 2016 elections? <laughs> Fair and square? No. They, they, they rigged it. How can you get one million votes? Invisible votes. For, look, we, we 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 had a thorough. We've had a thorough analysis of the 2020 elections, and we realized that there was a rigging. You, no, you were beaten in 2016. 2020, yes. you were beaten. And yes. If you knew that 2016 they rigged it, why then did weren't you you know out there to also protect the ballot box? We did. We did. And still, you were beaten. We did. But in 2024, it's going to be different. Really? Yes. How different, John? Because the voice of the people is the voice of God. Akwe MPP for uh what they, they've lied to us he, he was truthful about everything that was going on in the country but people turn that truth to oh this oh this when was the last time any mpp official has come out to say oh you know because of the doom so yes we admit there's a problem and so and so and so they'll tell you bring the bring your own timetable if there's a do if there's doom so how can you say that how can you say that to my question what makes you so sure that President John Mama will win. Everything points to the victory of um, NDC in 2024, including what the people are saying. Two things. Including, one, what the people are saying, and two, the measures we've put in place to be able to win the election. So, are you saying that come 7th January yes. 2025? President Mama will be holding that sword, and he'll be elected, or he'll be sworn in as the president of this country, 2025. And it's going to be one touch. One touch. Really? One touch. There, there, there are two independent candidates, or if you want, two people, strong people, at least for now. Mr. Alan Kujo, Chairman Sen. Nana Kwame Bidiako. I mean, these are forces that people feel that, if not for nothing at all, they can push this election to a second round or make it a difficult contest. Do you agree? They could push it to a second round. They could. So it will not be one touch. They could. Like you, 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 okay. But that's something. They could. Mm. They could push it to a second round but they are against the mpp oh these two oh, people i mean clearly i mean we are we are all fight we are all fighting against the ruling government we are not fighting among ourselves we are so fighting if you should go into a second round you'll join the ndc i i, I hope the oh, of course i hope i hope they'll join the ndc mm. yeah 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 but i don't think you to go to a second round you don't i don't think so i think it will be one you are time. very sure that I'm, it's going I'm to be very a one sure and i'm very confident about that yes extremely confident all right we, we, we have a message coming with it. Uh, some 22 minutes, well, actually 18 minutes to 8. eight. My, My name is Bola Ray, and our guest is John Dumelo, right here on Star Chat. With 18 minutes to 8, eight. I have this one coming in from Messi. Messi joining us from Legon, and uh, actually from Westlands. Okay, so West Legon. And he says that some, why didn't John go for a seat in the Volta region? How come? He's, he stuck to his original choice of Ayawaso West Wugan. Why didn't I go to Volta Region? Volta Region. Many, there were speculations that you were going to the Volta. Did you ever consider that? I mean, consider that. You I'm, considered it? I'm a farmer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, so my farming takes me all over the country. Did <laughs> you consider going to I, I, well, I, Please I, do I, I, There was a time I went for an event in somewhere in the Eastern Region, and I should, it was just three hours I spent, and they were like, Ah, John, I'm crying. Can you buy contest in my head? And so, you know, there are places where I go and people will say, okay, yeah, John, come and contest, come and contest. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. I think, I think my love heart and my heart has always been in Iowa, so West Wagon. And um, I contested in 2020 and no candidate has ever come back to contest again in Iowa, so West on the ticket of NDC. And this is the first time somebody's coming back to contest. And, and, and you know, I, I think that, no, I think I know that we're going to win the election in 2024. So I, I never con considered going anywhere. Yeah. You never considered no, no, no. going to the Volta region no, 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 to contest. No, no. Never crossed no, no. your mind. Yeah, I mean, if, of course, people will tell you, "Oh, John, why don't you contest here? Why did you know?" People will tell you that, right. but I don't think so. No. 
How is it? You and your good friend Fred Nyama. <laughs> Bola. Did, did, did he give you some butterflies in the tummy? Did there a point? You said that yes, you, you didn't trust him at a point. You so thought that he had actually, you know, backstabbed you and older. Bola. Yes. yes. How's it now? The matter passed. He died. He died. Yeah. He make you just Are you way better at the point? Were you shocked that Bola? Yes. Make that thing die. <laughs> <laughs> because me and you are yeah. we know Fred, so yeah. you made yeah. that thing die. Why right not me be the parliamentary candidate? Yeah, Make a he has, he, he, you, you have his support, right? Oh yeah, I mm. mean I, I bumped into him about two weeks ago and we we're talking. I mean we spoke briefly and yeah, you know. I was at an event uh, last week. At I Kim, saw the picture at yeah. the Kempinski yeah. as well, and and your good friend, an actor, Prince David Osei, yeah. who we all know is with the MPP, mm. says that this time around he's going to campaign for you. Yes. And he's going to, you know, support you. Yeah. Do you find that strange? Is this something that he's reached out to say? Yeah, he has. I mean, ah. I met him a week ago and he was like, ah. I was like, hey, Prince David. And he was like, John, I'm serious. I'm coming to campaign for you. He else. campaigned for the incumbent. Yeah. Honorable leader Al Hassan. Yes. But now he wants to campaign for me. Do you trust me. him that he's actually, or maybe he's just, no, you know, I, I think No, I think, I think I trust him. I think I trust him. And and you welcome Prince Day to, to campaign I'll for you. I welcome everybody who didn't support me in 2020 to support me in 2024 to be able to be member of parliament. Were you hurt in 2020? And be candid with us when you saw your colleagues going to the other side and campaigning for them. When you knew that, look, these are my friends. These are people I've been with in the industry. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice to make. Were you hurt? Of course. I mean, of course, when I saw the picture, I was like, ah. My point was, at least you talk me say you they come. Mm. Come and say, and don't come. Come. Charlie John, they say make you come, so we they come. But if you see pictures, make you no ball. Yeah, I mean, but so when I saw, I was like, ah, Charlie, you go But I mean, look, it's it's campaign. It's mm. part of life. Mm. It is. It is lessons. It's lessons. But now, most of them are coming to campaign. Oh, most of them are coming. Yeah. So it's not just Prince Day. No, 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 no. Either they are not coming at all, or they are coming for me. You know. So that's why I didn't really react because God has a special way of, you know, arranging things. Wow. Yeah. You are, you are, I mean, your party, and you're very close to President Bahama yeah. as well. What would the NDC government do differently for the creative industry this time? Look, I think that, and I know that the creative industry is a very strong force when it comes to development. Now, the reason why you and I will go to, or the reason why people will go to Dubai and so on and so forth is because of how, you know, tourists and creative arts and so on and so forth. And I know for a fact that President Mahama has a creative art industry at heart. I mean, why is it that when it comes to election time, they like to involve a lot of creative arts people? Because they know we are power force or we are power block. And once we say we are going left, everybody's going left. And so I know for a fact that when our manifesto comes, you know, what the, the plans that we have for the creative art industry will be spelt out, you know, back to back back to back yeah. well we, we, we have a message uh, coming in from nanase nanase says that we're listening to the show on campus on gimpa right. campus and hello to john yeah. but i want to find out from him as an alumnus of gimpa two degrees from gimpa is that right that's yeah. what nanase yeah, is yeah, saying yeah. Yeah. what has he done for the school oh, like and that's his constituency too so that's from nanase like question to john dumelo an alumnus of gimpa you're running for office in that constituency and and that demographic of course i mean students and all of that what have you done for gimpa you know i just i, I finished my second i finished my my masters in gimpa i think 2001 and constantly i've been there engaging the lecturers engaging the students and you know they keep on telling me what or some of the things that they need for gimpa what have you done for them you 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 actually run for office in 2020 and yes. so between now you're saying you're doing a lot for yes. university of i Ghana. mean in 2020 i some of the laptops i shared i said i gave some to gimpa students you know oh, okay. i get especially the less privileged i give i give some to gimpa students and currently we are working hand in hand with the src to be able to improve you know the student life on campus gimpa is different gimpa is not a typical tertiary institutions where you have hostels where people live on campus everybody comes in and goes out you know um the second thing i've done is recently i offered 200 internship slots for students across the constituency oh you did that 200 we, we had over 4,000 applications 
um, even even we're thinking of even bringing some to Star FM here, but mm. the connection he blast, but uh, we go reconnect them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so offering uh, op the internship opportunities to students, and these are the few things I can do or I did to help some of the students mm. across the course, not just Gimpa, Gimpa, Gimpa Legon, UPS, and so on and so forth. And these guys are working in Gimpa, banks, oil and, and gas, gas companies, companies, restaurants here and then. And these, you know, this are my little contribution. This is my little. This is interesting. Yeah. I can see that you have a blueprint for the youth because yes. for me, I'm concerned because i know 58 percent of Ghanaians are below 25 years Definitely. so we need to impact their lives and all. but what do you think of a significant agenda that you want to focus on as an mp that you are delivering a promising future especially in the next maybe 10 15 years if you get into office you mean my agenda for yes for the youth in particular i think it's about job creation one mm. entrepreneurship two especially entrepreneurship you know because not everybody wants to work but people also want to be the boss people want to own businesses and mm. i feel the youth these days are more and uh, they are more enterprising if i'm if that's the word or they are more entrepreneurial right you know than than you know probably our old folks you know and so i think job creation creating an avenue for them to set up their own jobs mm. and also looking for jobs for them to be able to you know um what do you call it fend for themselves what? one other thing which is very dear to my heart is this rent advance issue yeah, and i've always been talking about it on twitter and the youth are complaining that you know what look one year two years three years rent advance is too much and that's one of the few things or well, that's you, you want know, to address i want to address when i become a member of parliament that look we should we, it has to be it has to be a law it has to be six months Oh, you are advocating for six months. Yes, advocate rent advance at most. At most six months, because mm. you see, I spoke to a landlord, and and the land and, and he has so many houses around. I said, boss, so why you know they collect monthly? He says, John, I can collect monthly, but bosom the sooner some make a jia, and I mean my me and me me school fee, and it becomes so they like to collect one year. Okay, after. but if Ghanaians are genuine, six months can work. No, but now with Ghana card and all of that, it should be easy. But what, the Ghana card you could take it there. No, no, but I, I mean your location and all of that. Everything is synced, yeah. so they know where you are. You have a known address and all of that. That should help. Yeah, but people they change address all the time. The Ghana card, the address we they put for top. Most of them be fake, fake address. You no, know, be me. More. Oh, really? You no, know, be me. You're yeah, telling me. I didn't but know. I know be me. You no, know, be me talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at least it's linked to your bank, yes. your account, yes. your address where you live. Oh, but Ghana, if you want lost, you will be lost. You know, mm. they like UK way if you lost. No, so it has to also uh, be a very partisan. It means that yes. we need to yes. Yes. educate people. Yes. Let, let, yes. Let's have our yes. faith, you know. And, and, and the truth is, I know some landlords who take three months, even monthly, even six months. And, mm. you know, I, I, I salute them for that. I think six months, look, somebody cannot earn a salary, a youth cannot earn a mm. salary of 800, 900, 1,000 CDs. And, pay. and then mm. you want the person to pay two years rent advance for Chimai Hall mm -hmm. and then maybe Chimai was like 800 Ghana right. where is the person going to take 7,200 so really 8,400 8, from times 2 that's 16,800 yes. two years where the person will go collect that money from you know so I think it's a big issue it should be 6 months and, and it should be a law 6 months with probably 2 or 3 months uh, deposit so that in case of any back, 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 you go and you believe that it's something that even this should come to power you push for that I'll to be addressed I'll push for that 6 months straight up look there'll be a lot people will have a lot of uh disposable income mm. people will have a lot of money to do other things and once it's six months it's six months time to swan so other countries are doing monthly but yeah monthly in some way because of our attitude let's, let's push for six months and that's what i'll push when i get to parliament interesting yo Medawa says, so when you are a trainer, what you know, a bit drew a yes and pimping so when you are me own shower, not on terror shim, I was a quano hona, um, yummy, and my when you can say the piano ship, POG media, not my trendy as number one, not my number one air political a news air channel, ya ba on YouTube and everywhere on so when you be sharing that on the air cause of Ghana and even beyond, and some in ye and some pompons when ye. And there's what John Dumelo has said. And in some moon could tell baby and say, Hayana, Obey, Obina, no, it's you know, now. 
on so the be I had the two for no one with the Ghana yeah pempen so I had the echo that's the very reason why I say it's always and subscribe to a POG a media and a shade media name for fro and so answer in cabby name the in the back of food team in 10 years also but you made you know also for a team chain a day a brana a fabric to a the comment session ho name my you made any and cause of a fair thing they're doing it here my crown on that you're doing some to do on a brain watching my crown bye